Hello, everyone. Hello, Ian. Hello. Um, Good morning. We have our last Replic Creates workshop. I'm really sad about it, but I kind of think we saved the best for last, maybe. Um, we'll let all of you be the judge. But today we have Ian from the Replit team. Ian, do you want to do a little intro? Sure, yeah. Um, I am a software engineer here at Replit. I've uh, been dabbling with creative coding tools for a while, so I'm really excited that I have an opportunity to do this, and I hope that we can make some cool stuff at the end of this. Um, yeah, let's let's see what happens, though. Maybe some happy accidents. <laughs> Ian's been making some really cool projects for Replic Creates, and I'll post a link to um, his profile because I think some people were even sharing his stuff in the Discord. So, Ian, you're you're Replic Creates famous. <laughs> That's wonderful. I'm glad awesome. that it's gained some traction. <laughs> um, okay, do you want me to start it off with a little video? Yeah. So let's. Uh... Here's the, uh, the OG original uh, happy accident, Bob Ross. Sort of caught me fiddling around here a little bit. This being the last show of this series, I thought maybe, well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. I get so many cards and letters from people all over the country saying, Bob, what should I do if I'm in the middle of a painting and I decide I don't like it, or God forbid it goes sour? Well, I don't like to start off with something you haven't already done, so let me show you what you can do at home if you're not happy with a painting and if, if it's not going just the way you want it. You know, over and over again, I say, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. So today, let's have a happy accident and see what we can make out of it. And let's All right. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I'm going to, I'll start with uh, some of the, the philosophy for creating around having happy accidents when you make things. Um, and I think this is really, uh, really helpful for me when I just get into like a creative mindset is uh, having that happy accidents mindset. And really, uh, when you create things, I think a lot of times you you have this perfect image in your head of the thing that you want at the end. And it, it cuts you off from all these cool little things that happen on the way while you're making stuff. So today, we're going to focus on those those cool little things, those little happy accidents that happen in the process of creation. Um, so I'll get started here by uh, sharing. Do you want me to share my... this? One? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah. And then if you want to shoot this. A little bigger, on... Ian. Sorry? Can you make the text on the screen a little bigger? Is that good? I think bigger? more. Bigger? Yeah, let's go bigger, it's just to make sure. <laughs> Massive. Let's go bigger, go home here. All right, is that legible? Yeah. All right. So Let us know in the chat if it's not legible, but also I just shared the link to the template if you wanna just pull it up on your own computer. Yes, all right, cool. Yeah, so this template is, um, feel free to like make your own to start with like the Replit P5.js template too. Uh, I'm using P5.js for this uh, just to start. So if you already know how to use it, uh, you can go ahead and make your own sketch and just kind of follow along loosely. If you aren't uh, familiar with P5.js, uh, I made this kind of a little bit more approachable. So you can uh, join in here, you see some hello, and then the fun stuff starts here. This is just your your background setup, and there's a couple of variables that you can change around here. So you can uh, change this from like false to true. Um, and then there's just the, the general setup, which is uh, setting up the whole canvas, which is the, the picture where, the place where your pictures are drawn in um, processing or P5.js, which is what this template is based on. And then in draw here, um, I'll go in this, I'm just giving like a high level overview, but I'll go go in some deeper level here in a second. Um, there's just some some fun stuff to mess around with. So there's some good numbers here. Uh, good numbers make cool things happen. Uh, I'll show what that means soon. And there's some glitchy numbers here. So, or a glitchy number. And glitchy numbers are just gonna make things bounce around a lot. Um, so what we have here is just like a few, um, 
a few little little images that you can draw. So you can start with like a googly eye. Um, you can make a thing with a random colored outline. So you just give it the googly eye and then tell it how big the outline you want is. Um, you can make a flower and then uh, you can make a bunch of things in random places and then you can make that the flower. So the thing is the flower. Um, and then you can do that with the googly eyes too. And then there's a string here. So let me go back to the start here because that was a lot. Um, we have some comments in the chat, like such as, whoa, this is a cool REPL, which I agree. <laughs> I feel like this REPL is just like, oh my God. <laughs> Wait, can you show, show it again? Show it again. <laughs> if anyone wants to know what the inside of Ian's brain looks like. <laughs> This is, yes. this is just the resting state. <laughs> so we have our googly eyes following the mouse around here. So that's pretty cool. And then we had a tech panda pro say best function name right there. And I think it was the one that was like, make a bunch of random stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We get we get too fancy with our function names sometimes. Sometimes you just gotta be be direct and just call it make a thing. <laughs> All right. So, so what we have here, um, this is uh, this is where the the happy accidents happen. So, how do we apply this happy accidents philosophy to what we have here? We've got all of Ian's spots just barfed on the screen right now. Um, let's let's get this together, and uh, you know, I think the the best place to start is by this giant text that says fun um so <laughs> if we go here and we change like i i really highly encourage just going around and any numbers you see just try changing them to different numbers and see like just see what changes in the output here uh, if you have this template open um and really just experiment and, and tweak and see what kind of uh what kind of cool things happen that you like if you have certain numbers or what kind of uh, uncool things happen too. And then maybe maybe you like some of them and you can go in a certain direction. So let's go, let's make the background color fun here. And then uh, we're gonna clear the background every time. So it resets. So I'll update that. So now we have a fun background color. It's a bit more stable. It's not <laughs> smearing everything everywhere. Um, so we've got this, this nice drawing here with all these googly eyes. Um, maybe we want some less googly eyes. So let's just go um, down here to make a bunch of things in random places where we have googly eyes. And let's make uh, only one googly eye that's floating around. So now we, we have, have one. We have an audience request to, yes. uh, to use a random color for the oh, back yeah. and the draw thing. Let's, let's do it. Thanks, Ironclad Dove. All right. So let's do go to our setup background colors. Uh, we can use one of our good numbers here too. So yeah, this will be uh, extra fun. I love the good numbers and bad numbers. <laughs> <laughs> you know? What makes a good number? I'll get into that in a second, actually. Um, so we've got to set up set of background colors. So we can do, uh, so right now we have the make, make the background color fun. Let's do if make the color y glitchy. Um, we'll do ironclad dev suggestion here. So we'll do, um, background random let's see what do we think is going to happen here does the audience have any guesses for what might happen it's, it's going to break actually because i don't have make the background color glitchy defined <laughs> i think you uh you didn't capitalize the b in background when you wrote the function so just Ooh, thank you. That's what I'm here for. Um, I'm yeah. <laughs> your 
before. Oh man, I don't know if this is uh, it's safe. To, this needs a safety one. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to our nice. So this is like um, this is a good segue um into what makes a glitchy color and what makes a good color. So we have this is this is what I would call uh, glitchy here. So this random zero to two fifty five. Um, if we do three of them here, then each one of these is a uh, red. The first one is red. I'll make these variables actually. So we'll do this will make it. Um, and then we have blue. And then the the color, the background expects a color. So you just do red, green, blue. And now we'll get some even more wild colors. <laughs> Yeah. So so these are these are what I call glitchy numbers. So when you just call random like this, every time we call draw, which is every frame, so these animations is it's just um a bunch of really quick frames. And every time we call get a new frame, we're gonna get a random color. And there's no relationship between those random colors. They're gonna be anywhere from zero to two hundred and fifty-five because we're doing random and it'll be any any number there. Um, so sometimes you want a color changing kind of slowly like you have here in the background and it's kind of modulating and morphing. Those are what I like to call um, good numbers. <laughs> so a good number is, is like a nice smooth changing number. So within each frame, it kind of changes organically. Um, which is, it's based on this noise function, which is something called Perlin noise that people might be familiar with. Um, pretty much all of the, the graphics that you work with or see on a daily basis have some form of Perlin noise in them. Like any kind of texture in a video game you might play, if something is like a rock and it has some bumps on it, it's almost always Perlin noise. Um, and we're because incorporating it's... the frame count there. So I think, is that the part that makes it less like glitchy looking because we're Ex that into account? Yeah, exactly. So we have, if we just do the frame count, um, it's just something, I wonder if I can just do like text. Um, <laughs> let's see if that, what that looks like. I think it's like, I think the default is 60 frames per second. Right. I don't think this will show up though. Um, let's see. Nope. All right. Pretty much the, the yeah, the frame count so it's 60 frames per second. So every second this is increasing by 60. So one second it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, up to 60. And then two seconds, it'll be 60, 61, 62, up to 120. And then we pass that into this noise function. Um, and noise for each value, each next step, so one, two, three, four, uh, it creates another value that's similar, but random. So it'll give you something, if we just do like uh, console.log uh, frame count here, and then we can do um, a frame count. And then let's do our uh, noise, our noise for that frame count. So we'll do this. This is actually going to give us a really small number because it just gives you the way Perlin noise works in processing is it gives you a number between uh, 0 and 1. So if we show the developer tools what here. The, what does the like dollar sign thing do in P5? Oh, this is just for uh, logging it. So this just shows us the string in the. Uh, oh, does it turn a number into a string? Yeah, pretty much. So now right. we can see those here. So it just lets us uh, print that out. So for each, the frame count keeps going up here sequentially, and then the noise is kind of really organically changing, we can, I think we can do frame rate, uh, like if we set this really low. So now we're going two frames per second. So you can see this even smoother now. 
Um, so each one of these frames is changing. And then the noise, if you look at these values, uh, they're different, but they're pretty similar to the next value. So what you can do with that is say I want a random number that's um, between a certain range is I can multiply that by the, the largest I want that random number to be and the smallest will be zero. Mm. So I do 10 here and now I'm getting a, a smooth good number between um, zero and 10. So I'll turn this back up to like 60 here for the frame rate. Um, and I'm gonna stop logging that. So the other thing you have here is the, um, the division here, you might notice. So this pretty much just slows down the noise a bit. So if you have like um, our good number one here, where are we using that? So we're using this for um, make a bunch of things in random places. So if we do like that for the flower size, let's say we have uh, five flowers now and we change their size by, so we set their size, each of the flower size to good number one. So now you can see that they're kind of, it's pretty subtle. So we can make this bigger actually, if we wanted. Um, let's go to like 100. It should be changing more, or we might have to debug it. <laughs> Live coding. Oh yeah, let's see. So we're making flowers. So we can do the same idea here. So we're taking our noise, we're getting a good number. Um, let's go like this. So it'll be slower over 100. And then we change the value. I don't think we're using this size, that's why. Let's do it with the number of them, how about that? So I'll just set this back to 20. And then now we'll have a number of them that changes between zero and 300 flowers. Oh my God. <laughs> so you can see that there are zero and 300 flowers that are kind of popping on and off the screen. Yeah, for uh, I see somebody asking if they're late to the party. If you're just joining in, um, there's a template please fork it. Um, we're going to do something with these templates at the end. So this is, right now we're just kind of following along and working through some how to be creative ideas for, uh, for processing. If you know how to use processing already, feel free to create your own. Um, but please fork this and then just go in there and mess around with the numbers and see if you can get something that you like. Uh, and just just keep, keep tweaking those. We're going to do something with them soon. I like um, that the one flower has a googly eye in the center. Yeah, <laughs> it's the it's the observant flower. <laughs> so we can actually change. Let's let's get the same number of googly eyes as flowers. So I'll just go here. Now they all have eyeballs, <laughs> and they they follow your mouse too. So they're watching. Good. Um, so then we have this orange thing moving around here too. This is another thing that's in the, the template. Um, and this is just a, a string. I think the orange thing is my favorite. It's pretty mesmerizing to look at. Yeah, it's very, um, I don't know how to describe it. I called it, a, it was like a noodle at first, but then I felt more like a string or like a rope kind of. I'm gonna turn these down to 100 because it's getting really slow. <laughs> All right, that's better. Um, so you can just keep tweaking these, these values around so you can go, uh, green if you want. And now we have a green string. Um, the other thing that you might want to try doing, um, to, to experiment and, and tweak the code to get what you want is, uh, commenting the code out. So if you, if you're not familiar with, uh, programming at all, commenting just means when you write something that's for another programmer to read when they look through your code. So you can just type two slashes like this in JavaScript, which is what this is. And then type some regular words here for humans. Um, and then the next programmer that comes through your code will be able to read um, your stuff there. I so 
let's rename all comments as regular words for humans. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Doing a rebrand. Yeah, yeah, you're programming the developers instead of the computer when you write comments. <laughs> That's what they're for if you're writing good comments. Um, so yeah, let's um, let's do a couple of these. So I'm going to start uh, kind of making this into something. I'm going to just go through here and, and tweak some values. So I have this flower. Um, I'm going to get rid of the. Uh, I'm going to get rid of all these flowers. So I'm just commenting these out. You can highlight it all, and then if you're on a Mac, hit uh, Command uh, slash, which is just this key, and then after it'll it'll comment out your whole selection. Um, and you can just go like that. All right, so now we don't have everything everywhere. Um, I'm going to get rid of this flower for now. And then I'm going to, I'm going to make this eyeball smaller. So I'm going to go like, um, 50 maybe. So now we have two, two size 50 googly eyes. And then I'm going to, uh, actually let's make some, yeah, I'm going to get rid of the random outline too for the googly eye and then I'm going to make their their positions change with one of the good numbers so I'm going to do a good number uh, so I'm just going to add good number two and then good number three here and now we can see that they're very slightly moving um, so I'm going to make that bigger let's go to like 100 100. Um, so now they'll move quite a bit more. Oh. You can see them kind of moving around. And then I'll change the the Y. So this is the up and down to um, something, something too. So now they kind of Weirdly move. anthropomorphic. Right? <laughs> they just kind of moving around and <laughs> watching you when you move your, your cursor. Ironclad oh. Dev said that it's um, Jod staring at the code we're writing. <laughs> yeah. Replit, this is multiplayer. This is the back end of multiplayer. What's watching? <laughs> it's how we, we move the mouse. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to make the background color on fun, actually, and then I'm going to make it uh, not clear. So we're just going to keep everything after we draw it. So I have this cool line that I'm drawing still, which is happening uh, down here with make drawing. So this lets us do this thing that's following the mouse right now. Um, so now we have these like eyeballs and it's repeating. It kind of looks like a nose actually with the string moving around there. And then I'm going to change this to uh, turquoise. could have picked an easier color to spell. Um, so we have that now. And then let's make another string underneath that. So we can just copy this and go like this. And let's make it orange. Those are complementary colors. So now we have these. these um, Wait, what? What's going on with the strings? The strings are, uh, I just made two strings now. So now we have, yeah. this is a horrible word to use for programming actually, because it's usually yeah. referring to, <laughs> to like, this is a string, but regular, Whoa. regular folks don't speak that. I think I just scrolled down too much. Um, They're doing some wild things. Yeah, I don't know what happened there actually. That's pretty wild. So let's get rid of uh, yarn thickness and see what happens if we comment that out. And then let's make the speed really high. So one of them's like moving around Whoa. faster. All right, so we have some cool strings now. Let's make this black. I think we'll get more contrast that way. So that's pretty cool. How do they know to put themselves into a square? Uh, that's just a happy accident. <laughs> it just kind of happened. So Whoa. Yeah. So we have that. And you can go in here for whoever is watching and forking these templates. Um, I would I would come in and just change these values. Yeah, that's a good good suggestion, uh, Hugo and Reflet. We can fill the background with red too. 
So if we go to clear background, it is true. We can change the background color to red. Lena said when they say the title of the film in the film. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> That's um, it. Show's over. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have this background here. And we set it to fill red. Um, Someone was also wondering if you can remove the padding around the canvas, but isn't the padding intentional? Yeah, it is. It's just built in. So this is set to the full window height and window width right now. Um, so this is the, the built-in padding. So I'm going to set this back to false. And then let's, uh, let's start fresh again. So I'll keep this one. I'll remember this. Um, and then I'm going to pull up another copy of the template. So let's, um, let's make a new one. So for anybody watching, um, you should do the, check this out, go to use template here um, and make your own copy. And then we'll do something fun with all of them at the end too. So I'll make another one here, um, fork it again, or remix it. Um, so now we have a new one here. I'll run it. Ooh, get some confetti. Um, and we're we're back to this this beautiful initial creation. So let's just do a bunch of these now. So I'm going to start with another googly eye. Let's do make the size of it 50 here, um, and then let's make the position go all over the place. Um, so this one, okay, it went too all over the place. <laughs> it's it's gone now. <laughs> so we'll do good. Let's do noise. If you take anything away from this with processing, noise frame count over 300 times either your window width or your window height will make things uh, change in cool ways. So that's what's happening with this one. Let me comment everything else out so we can see what's happening. Because there's a lot going on here. <laughs> yes, it is a uh, modern. It is modern art. <laughs> so let's go like this. So we have this. This is the eyeball now that's changing with our, our window height. So this has a good number moving its horizontal x position. Um, and then let's change it to move up and down too. So now it's kind of modulating. And then if you add an offset, so it'll make sure it's not at the same place as the other one in the frame count, then you get some nicer kind of circular movement. Whoa. So now we have this eye. <laughs> and then let's copy the same. A bit it's... unsettling. Yeah, that one is kind of unsettling. Let's, uh... <laughs> it's kind of... <laughs> Maybe it'll be better if we have two of them. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> yeah, that's unsettling. Let's double it. Oh my god. <laughs> is it is it less unsettling now? <laughs> I actually kind of think so. Yeah, because it's like a face. Just one of them was kind of creepy. All right. So we have this. Uh, let's make a flower. Flowers are less unsettling too. So now we have this cool flower. Um, a really fun thing to mess with, here's a good number to change uh, for anybody who's forked this, um, is the number of petals. So if you go to like 10 petals, now you have all these, these petals here. And then it's kind of like slowly spinning. And then if you go up to like 100, you get the loading, the loading thing for a Mac. <laughs> so now we have this really cool fan. Um, so let's multiply this by a good number. That's awesome. Yeah. Let's try that. And then... OK, the eyes are kind of like, I weirdly like the trail they leave behind. Like, yeah, it it's... kind of looks 3D. I don't really know what's like going on there, but it's really interesting. I think the uh, I think it's because I think this number is wrong. Oh, that's why that's not a variable. Sorry. 
I, I think it's because like the, the shape on the top, like you get this, this line and it creates this sense of depth. Yeah. Which is cool. So it doesn't necessarily repeat itself. And it creates like a gradient. Yeah. It's very, uh, very satisfying to watch. So now we have this massive saw blade flower kind of slowly moving around. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm gonna call that for this one. Let's let's fork another one. Let's keep on uh, let's keep on making these. So I'm gonna make. I've got the processing docs up here, which is the. Yeah, I sent them in the chat too. If people have all right, P5. Sweet. So I'm gonna do this again. And let's make another one. Um, so we'll run this Bam. <laughs> every time. Um, so now let's set the background color. Let's do a fun background color. And then let's not clear it. Or let's clear it. So now it resets. And then let's uh, let's get rid of like these static elements. We want everything to move. So I'm going to comment these out. I'm going to get rid of the eyes. I think we're going a little bit overboard with the eyeballs now. Um, and then let's just focus on making a bunch of things in random places for now. So I'll just put these here. And let's start with uh, the flowers. So we're going to make a bunch of... Yeah, I'm reading the chat now, <laughs> Tech Panda Pro says, so when you want to draw a smiley face with programming, but it doesn't quite work out. <laughs> you um, just have little googly eyes. Yeah, <laughs> it's just the eyes. So now we have our, our size here. Um, let's make this like a really, let's, let's make this a flower. Let's ignore that for now. And then let's change the offset. Actually, we can leave the offset alone. Let's just make a bunch of flowers. Let's go to like 1,000 and see if that crashes wow. this. Okay, that's <laughs> way too many flowers. All right. Let's go to like, let's put a good number in here. Oh. Let's see. Ah. Let's go smaller. Smaller flowers? Yeah. All right. Let's see. I think this size is broken. Oh. Yeah. Let me go to make a bunch of things in random places. It's going to get technical real quick. <laughs> so I feel like the beauty of a template like this and like experimenting with it is that you can, you can have a little bit of a goal maybe like for, or like you can pick one, one variable to play with. So for example, right now we're like playing with the number of one thing, the flowers, but yeah. you can say, I want to optimize for like having the most different things, or I want them to all be moving. And you can just kind of like pick one surface to explore each time and you end up getting really cool stuff. Exactly. And I think that's a really good way to approach each one of these. So like every time you fork it, that's kind of what I'm trying to do now is just wow, these are go awesome. through. Yeah. Okay. I should update the template so that the size actually works. <laughs> so um, let me publish a new, new template. Templates fixed. We'll go through the publish flow here. All right, so now we have a new template. I'll clean these up afterwards. <laughs> so here's um, here's, here's the new template, so the size works <laughs> for your flowers. So now you can change your flower sizes. So let's put some good numbers in for the flower sizes. So let's do like good number two. They look like star, oh my God, wow, wow. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's refreshing. It really goes between like looking like a little star, looking like bow tie pasta and <laughs> uh, a windmill, like one of those like 
wind energy. Yeah. Like yeah. a really broken loading icon too. <laughs> the computer is just fried loading icon. Oh, this yeah, kind of has like a mid-century modern vibe to it now. <laughs> yeah. I feel like when they float apart, they kind of look like the brightness icon. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Tell us in the chat what you think this looks like because my mind is stuck on bow tie pasta, but I want to know what other people think. <laughs> so this is fun too. You can multiply the good numbers together for the size and then you can, <laughs> you can get other things. Wow. I want everything in my life to be governed by the good numbers. <laughs> Very good numbers and bad numbers. Today, it's all about the good numbers. Yeah, we don't need any any bad numbers. Yeah, no bad numbers here. So we have this. Let's see what happens if we divide. Now it's massive. Oh no, it's tiny. That was interesting. Let's go. Uh, let's just, I'm just, this is exactly, if you fork this template, I highly recommend doing this stuff too. Just kind of change these values around. Um, so let's do, let's make the offset different and then do two, two groups of flowers. And then the second one will just have 10 flowers. Whoa. This is really the ultimate playground. Like if you haven't worked <laughs> with two five and you want to like figure out how things work, this is, this is the spot. Yeah, just join on and fork the template, and then you can mess around with all the good numbers. So this one's good. All right, I'm happy. I'm happy with these wow. these flowers for now. Let's let's make another fork. Has anyone been playing in the background? Like, is there something really cool going on on someone yeah. else's screen? Can you can you show us? If, if anybody has. Yeah, if you're making something really cool, can you DM it to me on Discord, please? Thank you. I need to see more really satisfying images. All right, so let's do this. Let's focus on... the... Let's try some glitchy numbers this time. So let's do um, flowers with glitchy numbers. So we'll go glitchy number. So now they're they're really like going wild, bouncing around. We can slow that down so they're like vibrating less, and then we can do. Another glitchy number here. So let's uh, make it so we have a bunch of flowers appearing and disappearing. So really, like this is this is a great way, a great process to follow here. It's just kind of you know look at each of the parameters you have for some function that makes something, whether it's as simple as like even a, a circle or an ellipse, and just kind of keep changing them. And it's really fun to do it if you have some good numbers that are animating or some glitchy numbers that are animating and like bouncing around a bunch. So let's see, let's make the size a glitchy number over a good number. <laughs> uh oh. I think we broke it. Oh no. <laughs> oh, that's why. Sweet. All right, if anybody what what do we want to see next? Yeah, do we have yeah. Any... Give us requests in the chat. Yeah. Let's mess with this string. 
this yeah time. i actually i love the string can i do more string yes all right goodbye glitchy flowers so let's make this string really fast this is so soothing to me <laughs> make an alien okay thanks coder 100 let's do um let's give it some eyes so i'll make um googly eye up here Aliens. Aliens probably have eyes. We don't really know that for sure. Um, but this alien will. It's going to have smaller eyes. Um, those are too small, though. Let's go like 50. We're measuring the alien size in pixel dimensions. So. <laughs> um, I have a theory that we, that aliens are everywhere. I think I could see that. That, that makes sense because we have computers and electricity, so. <laughs> yeah, I just feel like they're not really what we think they are, you know? Yeah. Let's go. But here. they're definitely using good numbers. <laughs> They know all about all the good numbers. Times. Let's see. All right. So now that the aliens doesn't have static eyes. And then let's go. Let's offset the eyes a bit. So they're separate. Let's see. It's broken here. Don't you have to make two of them or no? Oh my gosh, yes. Thank you, Arnold. Yeah, and then just offset one of them. Yeah, so we'll offset the other eye here. So now we've got our eyes. Let's Maybe. make the uh, the Ys change a little bit differently though. So it goes up and down a little bit differently. See, people don't know that my real job at Replit is just <laughs> to find <laughs> typos in other people's code. Yes. It's it's really helpful right now, though, so <laughs> thank you. Wait, this kind of looks alien-like when the string kind of surrounds the eyes. Yeah. It moves that's... around like a little blob. That's that's interesting. Let's do another string. Uh-oh, I think we might have, I might have crashed it. Oh no. oh no, I missed an, a syntax error. Oh no, let's see. That's what you're it's, getting. It's this. I think something with having two of these strings. It's probably because they're called string. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> I'm gonna change this. <laughs> JavaScript doesn't have types, it's fine. <laughs> I'll call it a string thing. Okay, Tech Panda Pro wants to know what if we fill the string? All right, let's see what happens, Tech Panda Pro. I'm going to rename it to string thing now. String thing. <laughs> Make sure there aren't any. All right, so we have our, our string, we're into the so this is using a shape and we have a bunch of little line segments so you can kind of see it breaking apart there. So let's see what happens if we do fill shade. So we'll fill it with the same shade. I think it might need, let's see, I think we want triangles. If we want to fill it, And we'll want to do, let's do another, um, Is it because they're little line segments that you can't fill? Oh, there we go. Yeah. So they yeah. don't have any like depth to them. So we'll not use ribbon. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's go back to our good friend noise frame count here. 
It kind of looks like graffiti sometimes. Yeah, or like a bunch of, like a ladder made out of Doritos or something like that. <laughs> I'm gonna close the comments. A ladder made out of Doritos. <laughs> Ian's brain is firing on all cylinders. This, <laughs> this is maximum. Let's go like this. I'm going to be so creative today. It's crazy. Yeah, just open up this template whenever anybody, whenever you want to have a fun time in processing and have some happy accidents and make wow, graphics. The heartbeat. Oh, it kind of does. It has like that same. Um, same rhythm let's uh let's do another let's just flip these and put them on the other point here so whoa interesting okay i feel like also just as an aside um Replit is really the best platform to try to do stuff like this because you just like run it instantly and get to see what you made like right there. Exactly. And I think that could be so much harder, but because it just like, even you make a change in your code, it will like auto rerun it. And then you're like, oh, like that's what that did. And I feel like for creative coding, it's so useful because you're always like trying to like, sometimes you don't know what's going to happen when you type it when you type some code. Yeah, and it's just like really fun to be able to share this URL to my friends afterwards too. And like, yeah, if I make something cool, I can just like send them a link. Or if I'm, I've made like memes before on Replit with, with processing <laughs> or something like that, and then I can just like send it to somebody and then there's a website that you can share with anybody. I'm so really a um, ribbon. Really yarn whatever it is dorito yeah <laughs> the dorito ladder that's um all right so now we have this fill color and let's change the stroke weight down so that we can see more of the fill whoa let's make this blue so we get some complementary colors going on oh my god that's so cool it looks like a little kaleidoscope <laughs> and then let's go just put some random numbers in here. <laughs> this is, these are happy accident numbers. So then you go there and you kind of get some nicer modulations when you do that. This you is a really the good looking alien. Yeah. All right. Our alien is, it's kind of like one of the eels. Like, um, have you ever seen the eels that light up on the sea floor or something? Yeah. It kind of reminds me of that. All right. Yeah. I bet the googly eyes look just like that, too. Yeah. I'm going to name this one um, Alien. No, like Dorito Alien. Oh, true, true. All right. Cool. So we have the Dorito Alien. Let's make another template. Um, actually, we have 10 minutes left. So let's, let's get everybody's URLs. So... Everybody who's made a, sorry? Yeah, can people send, send the URLs? I have, I have a Hugo and Replit's URL ready to go. Coder100, you're definitely making something with flowers. Please send me the URL. Tech Panda Pro, I know you made something cool because I've collaborated <laughs> with you before and you're very creative. We have this. So I'm just going to start collecting these. Here's one. Let me send it to you again. All right, cool. I'm just going to keep putting these in all on a list here. All right, I'm adding yours. You go and wrap it. Um, I'll add this one in here. Wait, that one's already in there. Template three. Um, do we have the Dorito alien in there? We don't. All right. So now we'll add the Dorito alien. All right. 
Tech Panda Pro said, honestly, I'm just sitting back. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what you need to do when you're, you're going through one of these templates and you're changing the good numbers around and you're changing the numbers and watching it. You just kind of sit back and observe your creative process. It's really relaxing and, um, to just um, not go at it with a, a concrete outcome for your, your art and then just kind of see what happens and watch the yours, chaos unfold. Here's Coder 100. All right, I'm adding yours, Coder 100. All right, do we have anybody else? Um, checking my chat. Avery, you don't have anything, right? Oh, wait, we might have another one. Here we go. One more. All right. Oh, I think we have, are, are there two of them from Carter 100? Oh, wait, sorry, I did not copy. Oh, no, 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 sorry, that was that was Coder 100 sending it to me again. All right, cool. Never mind, we're Thank good. All right, cool. So now we're gonna make a collage with all of every everybody's sketches. Wow! And we can see what everybody made here. So let's, uh, there's the Alien Dorito. I think this is Hugo and Rafflets, maybe. Oh my God, you can make them bigger. Ian, this is sick. I wanna use this for other things. <laughs> So now we have everybody's eggs. Um, oh yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the flowers are cool. It's really subtle, but they're they're like dark and in the background. This is a good. Um, we'll we'll fill it up with this. Something like this. All right. Ooh. And then we'll put the the alien Dorito alien over here. This is a a very quickly put together uh, Revel to, to, to try and arrange these. Um, let's see, what do we have here? Oh no, it's not loading, I wonder. Oh, there it is. A bit hacky, is that what it says? <laughs> what does it say? I'm trying to. Bats, Replit. This is avant-garde, Replit. Back rooms. <laughs> Sponsor. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so I'll put this here. I don't know. Now we can. Means, but what? I don't know what that means. But we can tell you that in the back rooms of Replit, it's just everyone making weird art like this. Yes. <laughs> So if you didn't set the background to clear too, you'll have a transparent drawing. So when they come together like this, it's really fun. You can put like the eyes down there at the bottom. It looks interesting. Wow, I really like this collage template thing that you made, Ian. Thank you. It's so fun to see everyone's work on screen at the same time. Yeah, this is like the meta, the meta accident. So you can see everybody's stuff come together but sometimes like maybe I can arrange this so now I can make an even better Dorito alien because I have all these different parts that I can put together for it now so let's see whoa let's some, some eyeballs I'm gonna put this in the background so this would be like I really like Hugo's eggs yes where are they Also like with the flowers it's... on top, it looks like, yeah, it looks like the, the kind of like the shell of the egg and there's, it's very interesting. It's like feathers or something. It's very yeah. interesting. Very cool. Let's make this. Ooh, nice, nice polka dots you have in there too, Coder 100. Yeah. <laughs> Ian, can you screenshot this and... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, let me try and zoom out a little bit. So, we'll post it on so if you can have a memento of this. <laughs> Beautiful. Amazing. All right. We're now providing souvenirs with every Replit live stream. 
<laughs> yeah, this will be like a blanket or something. <laughs> this is Disneyland now. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank I... you, everyone. <laughs> this was amazing. Thanks, Lena. Thanks so much for joining <laughs> us. Um, I'm really excited about this. I think that people are going to have a ton of fun playing with this. And I'm, I'm just amazed by this whole collage situation we have going on. Um, <laughs> if you're watching this back after the fact, um, please send me what you make. And I'll, I'll share with Ian too, because I think... I, I just want to see the possibilities are truly endless. Yes, we can we can enhance the collage even more if we have more more sketches as this goes. So <laughs> Okay, everyone. Yeah. Don't forget that uh, today the prompt is to make something with a friend, I believe. You could multiplayer this, by the way. And make something really cool with your friend on Discord. That would be pretty cool. Um, on Friday, we also have our weekly review. And uh, that's where we show what people made this week. So if you want to show any of the stuff you made in this workshop or other stuff you made this week, let me know. Send, send me your stuff on Discord. Um, or send me a little video. And Lena also says, publish whatever you make from this workshop, make sure you publish it to the community and you can tag us in the comments and then we'll, we'll find it too. And use the create 31 hashtag. Cause that's how, that's how we look for the good stuff. Let me just put it in the chat. Nice. All right, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Ian. Cool. Yeah, thanks for having me. See ya. Bye.